بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم سالار خان ہیر اینڈ ٹو ڈے ود دا نیو ٹاپک آف دی انورس لیپ لاس ٹرانسفارم بیسیکلی ناٹ اے نیو ٹاپک بٹ سم تھنگ اے اسٹیپ اے ہیڈ اوکے سو فرسٹ آف آل فرسٹ آف آل لیٹ می اپالوجائز یو نو دا تھنگ از یو ووڈ بی نوٹسنگ سم بیک گراؤنڈ نوائز یو ہیو پرابلمس ان دا پریویس تھری اور فور ویڈیوز اینڈ دیٹ از آف کورس ڈیو ٹو دا فیکٹ so uh, the the weather is hot you know very well and without the fan i cannot make a video so that is why uh, well and if i remove it manually so then my voice gets a, a little disturbed so 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 then it it's not that sort of uh, you know interesting it loses interest so uh, well please uh, just ignore it for a few videos a few videos i'll solve the problem in the next two three videos today the weather is a bit good so for this video i've turned off the fan just to see what happens in the next maybe you get the noise again anyways that is not a big deal it does feel bad but uh, you know uh, i'm sorry for that i told you anyways the inverse laplace transform Now, whenever we talk, we, we started the, these transform things, first from the Fourier series, then the Fourier transform, whether in the continuous time case or in the discrete time case. So we did not see a single equation. We saw a couple of them. They were in a pair form. They were in a pair form. Number one was to give you the forward thing. One in terms of the other. And then the second equation was the reverse of that, which means the other in terms of the first. So that is what I'm calling the pair. So in the Laplace transform that we've seen till now is this equation only. That is x of s is running from a negative infinity to positive x of t exponential of negative st integration with respect to t. So we have only seen this one equation, which means this is the frequency in terms of the time domain. And this equation is called the analysis equation. This is the analysis equation. So what have we seen till now? We've seen these two equations. The one, number one, the analysis. The second, the synthesis equation. So this analysis is, is, is the, the, the frequency uh, time domain in terms of the, the frequency domain in terms of the time domain. If I want to summarize this. So this was what? This was what? We had an algebraic expression for this Laplace transform as well as an ROC. As well as an ROC. Now what was ROC? So ROC was the values of S in the complex frequency plane for which this, this, this integral converges or the Laplace transform exists. Now if you are given a Laplace transform, Till now that we have discussed is that if you are given a signal, how to find its Laplace transform. But now if you are given a Laplace transform, how do we find the corresponding time domain signal? This is the target for the inverse Laplace transform. Is that fine? Yes. So now, again the ROC comes into play. The same Laplace transform having different ROCs can have different corresponding signals. And as we've already seen in the introduction, that different signals may have the same Laplace transform. But of course the ROC is different. So how would we, we go back, as we saw in the previous video in the example, in the very previous video. We have the same Laplace transform. For one Laplace transform, for one ROC the signal was left-handed. For one it was right-handed. The possible ROC was left side, the possible ROC was right side, the possible ROC was in the middle of the strip. So for this, we know that now the corresponding time domain signal which corresponds to the ROC. So the corresponding, so the ROC that was to the left side, so the corresponding signal in time domain would be left sided for the same algebraic expression. Similarly, for the right sided ROC, the corresponding time domain signal would be right sided for the same algebraic expression of of what of ROC of, of, of Laplace transform 
So that is what I'm telling you about the, the importance of the ROC in the Laplace transform. So coming to the now we come to the synthesis equation. Now we come to the synthesis equation. Synthesis equation means what? That now on the left hand side we have x of t and on the right hand side we have x of s. So which means I need x of t as some function of as some function of x of s. Now this is my goal to achieve. So what do I do? I, I do it like this. As I have x of s, x of s I can write this is x of sigma plus j omega negative infinity to positive infinity x of t and an exponential of negative sigma t exponential of negative j omega t integration is with respect to t have a look can i not say that this x of sigma plus j omega or x of s is the fourier transform of this particular thing i can say it i can say it right so i have the inverse fourier transform relation I, I can I can write over here that this x of s is the Fourier transform of what x of t into exponential of negative sigma t. <coughs> Sorry, is that fine till here? Yes. So now we know the inverse Fourier transform relation. We know the inverse Fourier transform relation. And what is that? That x of t would be equal to uh, 1 over 2 pi, the integration negative infinity to positive infinity, x of uh, uh, j omega, right? x of j omega into exponential of j omega t with respect to omega, right? So over here, have a look x of j omega is the Fourier transform, x of t is the signal. Over here, x of t, x of sigma plus j omega is the Fourier transform, x of t into exponential negative j omega t is the signal. So which means I could write what? This implies what? That I have it like this, x of t into exponential of negative sigma t, right? And this is equal to 1 upon 2 pi integration. For the Fourier transform, I have this thing. I, you can also write as x of s right and then you have exponential of positive j omega t and this is with respect to omega and isn't it like this it is it is now what do i do now now i i, I require x of t okay so so which means i would multiply both sides by exponential of positive j omega t so which means what that i have x of t is equal to uh, 1 over 2 pi integration then you have x of let me name it as s right then you have exponential of uh, uh, sigma uh, sigma would also come here sigma t so i could write sigma plus j omega i would take as constant uh, as common or over here also let me write it like this so that both are the same uh, into t and the integration is with respect to omega fine is that fine till here it is now I change these things. Why? Because the limits are with respect to, uh, I change the, 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 the independent variable. Why? Because these limits were with respect to uh, the time, t, but now we have omega. So I say that, let me write it as, as we know that s is equal to sigma plus j omega, right? We know that s is equal to sigma plus j omega. So now if I integrate it with respect to omega, so this would imply that ds is equal to j times d omega ds over d omega sigma's integration derivative with respect to omega would be uh, zero and then j would be constant o omega with respect to omega is one i change it to the other side fine ds is equal to j times d omega or i could write that this my j omega my j omega would be equal to d omega would be equal to ds upon j 
Now, x of t, have a look for x of t. x of t is equal to, wait, wait, wait. Let me use the black pen. x of t is equal to, so this 1 upon 2 pi, wait for the limits. x of s, exponential of positive st, ds, j is constant, I would write it over here. Limits, limits of integration, what to do? What to do with the limits of integration? So, uh, this was for omega, right? These limits were for omega, the blue color. And this, the previously I told wrong, okay, about the limits. The, the thing is that previously we had these limits with respect to omega. Now we need it with respect to s, okay? So, when omega tends to negative infinity, s also tend uh, over here. Uh, from here, what do we have? Omega tends to negative infinity implies what? That uh, s tends to sigma minus j infinity, right? When omega tends to positive infinity, so your s tends to sigma plus j infinity. So, this is what the limits are. Sigma minus j infinity, sigma plus j infinity and isn't it like this? It is. And this is the equation for the inverse Laplace transform or this is the equation that is called the synthesis equation. The limits I have written it like this because these would be the limits of the ROC. These would be the region where the ROC exists. Fine. This is the inverse Laplace transform relation. But we will not be using it in most of the cases. Why? Because this seems difficult. To me, of course, it seems difficult because I cannot solve it mathematically. I am very weak. Generally, generally for Laplace transform that are in rational forms, right? They are mostly in rational forms and when they are in rational forms, we will use the partial fraction expansion method to do this, right? So this was just to prove it. The method that we would use mostly would be the partial fraction expansion. Example, let's say I have an example. The example is, let's say number one and uh, uh, a Fourier transform is given in this form s plus 1 s plus 2 now also a region of convergence is given that real of s is greater than minus 1 oh, and we are asked the corresponding time domain signal x of t we are asked the corresponding time domain signal x of t so of course, if you're strong in mathematics, stronger in calculations, use this formula, solve it. I'm not. So, what do I do? I use the partial fraction expansion. I can do what? I can say that my x of s, which is this thing, s plus 1 into s plus 2, I can write it as an a upon s plus 1 plus a b upon s plus 2. If I multiply it on both sides, so partial fraction. implies what I would have 1 is equal to a times s plus 2 plus b times s plus 1. So if you solve it you would get a equal to 1 b equal to minus 1 you can solve it by yourself. For putting a equal to 0 you put to make a 0 you put s equal to minus 2 you would get the value of b. To find the value of a you put a s equal to minus 1 you would get b 0 you will get the value of a. So which means that I found my x of s 1 upon s plus 1 minus 1 upon s plus 2 and isn't it like this it is like this. Now keeping in mind the overall signal keeping in mind the overall signal well, this was a right handed signal so which means that the signal that is, is made of these would also be right handed so we know the very basic definition that exponential of negative a t into u of t 
the corresponding pair is 1 upon s plus a is that fine so which means that for uh, exponential of uh, negative t u t we would have what we would have the corresponding as 1 over s plus 1 similarly over here we have a 2 so we have an exponential of negative 2 t u of d this would be corresponding to 1 over s plus 2 isn't it like this it is for this if you see for this the region of convergence would be real of s greater than minus 1 greater than minus 1 i have mentioned why because this was a right headed signal based on the u of t and why did i write based on u of t because based on the question and for the second also we would have real of s greater than minus 2 which means that i've got my corresponding time domain signal as this thing which implies that my corresponding x of t is equal to exponential of negative t u of t minus exponential of negative 2t u of t and of course you can take the u of t common and that is it that is it let me remove the board first okay example number two the same uh, the same algebraic expression that i was talking about in the beginning of the video but you will see the difference now now the region of convergence is given to be less than minus 2 so whenever you are given a oh weight we are asked to find the corresponding time domain signal x of t so whenever you are given a question and you are given an roc so first of all you you try to you try to draw it first so if this is your minus 2 it's the left side of minus 2 so this is your roc if this is the j omega axis this is the sigma axis so which suggests what that the signal is if the roc is a left sided signal this suggests that suggests that what yes that the corresponding time domain signal is a left sided signal fine so x of t is unknown so again using the partial fraction method i could use what x of s i could write as a upon s plus 1 plus b upon s plus 2 again you have the same thing 1 upon s plus 1 minus 1 upon s plus 2 so you have two things now again but now have a look the signal is left-handed so for a left-handed you know what that your exponential of negative a t u of minus t like this it is yes exponential of negative no negative times exponential of negative a t yes negative times exponential of negative a t u of t this gives you the corresponding laplace transform again equal to 1 over s plus a and for this case now real of s would be less than minus a yes so which means now for left hand side this is one signal 1 over s plus a 1 so which means your a is 1 so which means you have a negative exponential of negative t u of minus t so for this you have the corresponding laplace transform as 1 s plus 1 sigma for this case now has to be less than minus 1 why because the overall signal is a left sided signal and similarly similarly you have the negative exponential of negative 2t u of minus t for this you have now the corresponding would be s plus 2 and now have a look for this sigma would be less than minus 2 again why because this corresponds to a left hand left sided signal the same laplace transform we saw right sided in the first case we're seeing left side in the same case the changes are on on the basis of what on the basis of the roc so now what do you do you write the corresponding time domain signal the corresponding time domain signal would be x of t which is equal to uh, negative times negative t u of minus t uh, uh, and then a minus minus would become a plus exponential of minus 2 t 
u of minus t and of course you can take this thing common you can write an exponential of negative 2t minus exponential of a negative t and whole into u of minus t that is the answer the third case the third case we have the same Laplace transform but now but now what do you have now the region of convergence lies within a within a certain range within a certain range of boundaries negative 2 and negative 1 which means something like this this is negative 2 this is negative 1 this is your ROC which means this is now a strip of signal this suggests what that your corresponding time domain signal has to be a double sided signal it has to include the left side it has to include the right side so again doing it by the same way x of s is a upon s plus 1 plus b upon s plus 2 you get a 1 upon s plus 1 uh, and then a minus 1 upon s plus 2 now you have to include both the left side and the right side as well so which means for the left side i have like for the right side i have it like this for this sigma is less than minus of a for this sigma is greater than minus of a so have a look now one is s plus one the other is s plus two so you take a left sided signal it is to the left of negative one right so this i would take as a left side so i have an exponential of negative t u of minus t right minus of yes so the corresponding for this would be a 1 upon s plus 1 with sigma less than minus 1 right yes this is the corresponding left sided signal have a look for the ROCs to the left of this now the ROCs to the right of 2 so this 2 1 we take to the right so which means we have an exponential of negative 2 t u of t the corresponding for this is 1 over s plus 2 sigma's value to be greater than minus 2 this suggests that the signal is right sided so have a look we have included the left side and we have included the right side this means the overall signal is a two sided signal so i would write that my x of t has become what x of t has become this thing negative exponential of negative t u of minus t and then you have a minus with, a, with s plus 2 right this one minus so minus exponential uh, so minus minus would become plus minus 2t u of t this is the answer so that was the point i needed to explain the importance of ROC in the beginning for the inverse laplace transform as well and what was that that that, that the, for the same algebraic expression we can have different values of the corresponding x of t so anyway now somebody asked uh, you know in our classroom not over here then why are we studying Laplace transform so Laplace transform is first of all uh, you know a continuation of the Fourier transform you know that very well right and then uh, uh, the, we, 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 we can also define the Laplace transform for those signals for which the Fourier transform is not may not be defined which means there would be some signal which may not convert for Fourier transform but their Laplace transform would exist so that would tell you about the frequency domain representation of it right then in the of course in the uh, you know uh, 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 digital signal processing course you, you understand it in a better way again and then in the control systems revolves around this the stability of a system you study that maybe in your eighth semester the control semester control systems course where the stability of the system is defined by the poles and zeros fine so anyways that could be it 
the Laplace transform could also be evaluated for those signals which are not absolutely integrable. So that was some general points about it. That is it for this video. See in the next one with the properties of Laplace transform. Till then take care of yourselves and everyone around you. Do remember me in your prayers. Do subscribe to the channel. Goodbye.